Bitcoin. 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 Hey there YouTube coin community, it's Dustin with CoinOp and today we are doing a video in conjunction with So we are doing this with Couch Collectibles. If you have not seen video one, there is the first part of this over on Justin's channel over on Couch Collectibles. I will post links down in the comments to absolutely everything. So make sure you go over and check out that video if you haven't seen that first. Now this is a video on coin searching Jefferson Nichols. So let's dive right on in. While you are coin searching, if you put aside your Jefferson Nichols, there is just a pile of stuff to look for in that coin series. Now, Justin over on Couch Collectibles does have part one of this video listed where he is showing you all of the main key dates, semi key dates, the stuff that you really wanna be looking for, the silver and the key dates. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you while you are searching your Jefferson Nichols, which varieties that you should be looking for, the double dies, repunch mint marks, things along those lines. So let's take a look at them. First up, we are taking a look at a 1939 Jefferson Nickel that is listed as FS801. Now this is a doubled die reverse. On this one, doubling shows very strong on the entire reverse. It shows on the Monticello building, on five cents, on United States of America. Well, the entire reverse, and it is very, very strong. You do not need a jeweler's loop to see it. If you happen to find one of these beautiful varieties while you are coin searching, they typically trade in circulated conditions as low as $50 and upwards of $350, while uncirculated examples start out at around $400 and can trade as high as $21,000. So this can be quite valuable. Okay, now we are moving on to the very popular 1942 Denver Mint Jefferson Nickel. Now this is a D over D. This is a repunched mint mark. And this is a really unique repunched mint mark. This is a very, very popular one in the entire series. This one, the primary mint mark was punched over top of a horizontal D mint mark. When they were originally punching in the mint mark, the mint employee messed up and just repunched right over top of it, creating this beautiful variety. Now, if you're lucky enough to find one of these circulated examples, start out at around $70 and they can trade all the way up to $1,250, while uncirculated examples start out at around $1,500 and can trade all the way up to $14,500. Now we are moving on. We are taking a look at the 1943 Jefferson Nickel. This one is listed as FS106. This is a double die obverse. Doubling shows very well and very strong on the entire obverse. But the key pickup point on this one is the obvious doubled eyelid. You can see it without a jeweler's loop. So if you look at this one, and you just glance right at that eyelid, you can clearly see the doubled eyelid. Now doubling does show on Liberty and on In God We Trust along with the date, but your pickup point on this one is the eyelid. Now if you do happen to find one of these while you are coin searching, circulated examples start out at around $30 and trade upwards of 80, while uncirculated examples start out at around $100 and can trade upwards of 7,500. Now we are moving on to the 1943 over two. Now this one is listed as FS 101. This is a double die obverse, but the main pickup point on this one is the three and the date. 
the three is clearly over top of a two when you are looking at it, especially when compared to a regular 1943, it is quite obvious. But the pickup point on this one is the three in the date. Now, if you do happen to find one of these, Circulated examples start out at around $70 and trade upwards of $250, while uncirculated examples start out at around $310 and trade upwards of $5,500. Now we are moving on to the 1945 Double Die Reverse. Jefferson Nickel, listed as FS801. This is a very, very popular double die reverse. This is an extremely strong double die reverse that you really don't need any magnification to see this, although it does help. Now, when you are looking at this one, doubling shows all over the entire reverse, but it is the strongest down on Monte Cello and on five cents. You can see it on United States of America. You can see it very strong on the left side of the Monte Cello building. Now, if you do happen to find one of these extremely beautiful double dies, they start out in circulated conditions trading at around $20 and upwards of $80, while uncirculated examples tend to trade between $110 and upwards of $15,000. Now we are moving on to the 1949 Denver Mint Jefferson Nickel. This one is a D over S. This is another over mint mark. Now this one, a D mint mark, which is the primary mint mark, was punched over top of an S mint mark. In order for the mint to save some money and preserve the dyes, they used some of the San Francisco dyes and they were supposed to polish away the mint mark and repunch in the D mint mark so that they could produce more Denver mint ones. And well, the S mint mark didn't get fully polished all the way away, creating this beautiful variety. Now, if you happen to find one of these, they start out in circulated conditions and low grade at around $5 and trade upwards of $30, while uncirculated examples start out at around $40 and can trade upwards of $1,050. Okay, now we are taking a look at a 1954 S over D. This is another over mint mark. This is a 1954 San Francisco Jefferson nickel with mint mark punched over top of a Denver mint. Now, in order to save money, the mint had taken some of the Denver mint dyes that year that were not fully used, and they polished off the mint mark and repunched in the mint mark for San Francisco in order to use some of those dyes. And well, some of the mint mark did not get polished all the way away creating this beautiful variety. Now, if you happen to find one of these while you are coin searching, circulated examples start out at around $5. You can trade upwards of around 20, while uncirculated examples start out at around $25 and can trade upwards of $1,250. Now we are taking a look at a 1955 Denver Mint Jefferson Nickel. This is a D over S mint mark variety, yet another over mint mark. Now over mint marks are pretty scarce in all of our coinage series. So anytime one of them is out there, they typically are pretty popular. And this one is quite a popular variety. Now clearly the mint mark was punched over top of a San Francisco mint mark. Now, if you do happen to find one of these beautiful varieties while you are coin searching, circulated examples start out at around $5 and trade upwards of around $30, while uncirculated examples start out at around $40 and can trade upwards of $1,050. Now we are taking a look at a 1975 Denver Mint Mark Jefferson Nickel. Now this one is listed as FS401. Now this is quite a unique variety that over the last few years has gained quite a bit of popularity. I get asked quite a few questions about this one and to be honest, I don't have a whole lot of information on it. This is a misplaced mint mark or a floating mint mark. You'll hear people call it that as well. Now, if you take a look at this one, especially compared to a regular Jefferson Nickel, you will see that the mint mark is clearly in a very high position and it is kind of tucked 
to the left of the date. That is the wrong mint mark position for this year. Now, I do not exactly have values on this one. I can't find too many values. I have seen some of these trade as low as $50 and as high as 200. So there's a baseline for you, but I do not have values on that. So that is a beautiful variety for you to look for that is definitely gaining some popularity. And lastly, we are gonna take a look at the 2005 Denver Mint Jefferson Nickel. Now this one is the one that features the bison on it. This is the Speared Bison variety. This one is very popular and it is quite a modern variety. This one hasn't been out there all that many years and it is just super popular. You can find lots of examples of this trading on eBay and various auction sites. Even Heritage has some listed. Now when you are looking at this one, you will see on the bison, starting in the center of the bison's back and coming out down through his belly, you will see a die gouge that runs straight through it, giving it the appearance of being speared. Now if you happen to find one of these, while you are coin searching, really low grade examples start out at around $8 and can trade upwards in circulated conditions for around $80. While uncirculated examples start out at around $110 and can trade upwards of $5,000. So even though this is a very modern variety, it can be quite valuable in a beautiful uncirculated grade. Well, everyone, we definitely hope you enjoyed this video. We did do this video in conjunction with Couch Collectibles. I had a lot of fun working on this with Justin over on Couch Collectibles. He is just a ton of fun, a lot of fun to talk to, and I absolutely love his videos and his channel. I do watch his content. I will post links down to his channel and to uh, his video as well, the part one to this one, so that if you have not seen any of that, you can check it out. If you are not subscribed to his channel, make sure you subscribe to his channel. He is on the verge of breaking 40,000 subscribers, so all the support definitely helps out. Well, if you enjoyed this video, you can also do us a huge favor by hitting that thumbs up button, leaving us a comment. And if you are not yet subscribed to our channel, click on that subscribe button. And while you are at it, click on the notification bell. That way you get notified immediately when we upload new content. Well, everyone, until next time, have fun. Oh.